Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, and God of our Lord Jesus Christ, and God of glory. We are here today on the first day of the week to hear the message of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, seasonal message. We want to hear your message, Lord. Give a spirit of wisdom and revelation and open our understanding so that we may be able to understand your will and the inheritance reserved by you for us, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to read the book of Psalm chapter 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at right, thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathens. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore, shall he lift up the head. Okay, today's message, you know, saying God revenge on this world. Uh, let me read the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1 through 6. We have to understand why God has to revenge on this world, even though God's all over the world. God is love. But also God is the one who revenge according to his righteousness. Okay, let me read verse 1 through 6. Who is this that comes from Edom with the dyed garments from Bozra? This that is glorious and his appeared travailing in the greatness of his strength I does speak in righteousness mighty to save wherefore art thou the red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. 
and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me, and I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them a drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. What a fearful message. Well, we have to understand why God spoke through Prophet Isaiah in a fearful message unto the world. It's a fear for God. God so loved the world, you know, 2,000 years ago, that God made him who was in the beginning with him as the word through the Holy Spirit to be a man in the name of Jesus, his only begotten son, a sacrifice for the sin of the world. God the Father exalted him to be the Lord and Christ when he resurrected after he removed the sin of the world. In other words, the name of Jehovah God was their Lord for the people of Israel. But from now on, on Jesus' name, became the Lord of all the world, all the nations and people. In addition, God has made him the seed of woman, as God spoke in the Garden of Eden, who will bruise the serpent, serpent's head, and judge it at the devil as his only begotten son, Jesus, the Savior of all. Therefore, from now on, only the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of all nations, people, for the salvation from sin and death and curses. Because of this, Apostle Peter testified that after Jesus died and rose again the third day, he became the Lord and Christ by judging the old serpent, the devil, ten days after the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ to heaven, Heavenly Father sent the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, into the world in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost who came in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the past 2,000 years, men will no longer have the opportunity to be righteous unless they, not be, they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The old serpent, the devil, has only been judged, already been judged. The Holy Ghost has been testifying through his servants that they cannot escape the judgment that falls into the pool of eternal fire unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God is fair. But for the last 2,000 years, the devil has been using his church, especially his church, the Roman Catholic, and false prophets to hide the fact the devil was judged, preventing Jews and Gentiles from believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and still following the world's ruler devil leading to destruction forever. He has also persecuted and killed tens of millions of Christians, I mean, I mean uh, Roman Catholic Church, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ according to the Bible. To the Bible. Because Roman Catholic Church became the bride of the devil. In addition, the old serpent the devil has created many religious religions 
that have led people not to hear the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ, leading them to eternal destruction. It also produced the fake churches, making people just religious, not believers, to follow mammon, not God. Even in 2020, the Roman Catholic Church will destroy most of the world's churches through the World Church Council, WCC, which was made the Satan's bride. That is Roman Catholic Church. For God, who endured 2,000 years just as two days and still loved the world, had no choice but to take revenge on it. God, who not spared the only begotten Son, is God, and gave him for the sinners of the world, is now taking vengeance against the world as the time is fulfilled according to his timetable. Before he laid the foundation of the world, God had predestinated to adopt the believers as his children to the Lord Jesus Christ and gathered heaven and earth in Christ when the time come. Apostle Paul testified of this fact. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein uh, he hath made us accepted and beloved, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purp uh, purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullest of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, of both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. What is in him? There's a church. Considering God's timetable, his time schedule, which he walked six days and rested on the seventh day, God has been walking to restore all things through his servants for the past 6,000 years after the old devil brought sin to the world. In the last 2,000 years, he had accomplished this through his only begotten son. Now, God cannot end his recovery work without judging the Satan through Christ to end the past the six days. That means 6,000 years. And as well, man not believing in Christ until the end. Judging the world, he loved this way, is also included in his work of recovery. The prophet Isaiah finally previewed and witnessed in the Holy Ghost the vengeance against the world that not believe yet still in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is this that comes from Edom? We died garments from Bosra. It's prophesied by Isaiah about the vengeance of Jesus Christ. That this dad is glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of the strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadest in the wine fat? Have trodden the winepress alone, 
and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Jesus Christ, after resurrected, appeared to Apostle John and showed what would happen in the day of vengeance shown by Prophet Isaiah, as I just read. He said, And I saw a heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness it does judge and make war. Even war as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called uh, the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon a white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes the sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah, when he come, he judged the whole world because they do not believe in yet. He swiped them. He will swipe them all from the earth. And he will reign in the earth. Heaven and earth. As king of kings and lord of lords. It's called the millennium kingdom. Prophet Isaiah witnessed of the scene of his coming with fire when he came to take revenge on this world. Oh, the dark wood is around the heaven, the dark wood is come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. When a, when a melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst the terrible things which they looked not for, thou comest down, the mountains fall down of thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee what he hath prepared for him, that waiteth for him. Yeah, the judgment. Nobody has seen that, heard of it. Apostle Paul quoted Isaiah's testimony in the Holy Ghost about God, what God prepared for those who wait for him. But as it is written, eyes hast not seen, nor ear heard, and neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things. Yeah, 
the deep things of God. Only those who are born again with the Holy Spirit can see and hear, you know, the sin of the vengeance of God. A natural man cannot imagine at all. They never believe because they've never seen that. They've never heard of it, you know. Only through the Holy Spirit, you understand. If you are born again of the Holy Spirit, you may understand what I said, what I preach now. If not, no way for you to understand that. God caused the prophet Isaiah to prophesy about moving his children, born again Christian, born again Church of God, to heaven before the great tribulation, before the day of the vengeance, revenge of God. Terrible. Revenge. God's day of vengeance. The righteous perishes, and no man lays it to heart, and merciful men are taken away non considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one working in his righteousness. Yeah. The people in church of God, born again Christian, shall be lifted to heaven before, you know, this kind of vengeance of God comes. Jesus Christ, resurrected Jesus Christ, showed the apostle John, the church of Philadelphia, to be lifted, to be raptured to heaven before the great tribulation. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. That means open door is an open door is the door of rapture in heaven. And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. That our temptation is gratulation. Gratulation means judgment on the whole world because they have not still believed in Jesus Christ. No excuse. No complaint. Because they have never accepted, you know, Jesus Christ, the Son of a God. Because he even he died for for them all. We shall come upon all the world to try them the devil a dwell on, upon the earth. Behold I come quickly, quickly. Hold that fast. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. We're not going to lose our salvation, but a crown could be taken out. Because we must be very careful. We have to leave, you know, honestly. We have to live in uh, purity, waiting upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless all of you. You may be able to understand this message. This message, you know, it's not, it is not kind of um, dreadful message for the children of God. But this message is fearful for the old nations people because they are not believe in Jesus Christ yet. This message is the message of peace and message of comfort. I bless all of you to have a comfort upon hearing this message. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.